So we are right here at <laughs> AGI plug. House at the Vibe Coding Summit. So uh, my name is Jonathan. I was the co-founder of a company called Adrenaline, and we built the first like chat with your code base app, um, even before Cursor. Uh, I'm, my my name is Jay, and uh, I'm a co-founder and CEO of Final AI, and um, we're building the end-to-end uh, AI-powered recruiting tools for uh, candidates. And now we are getting almost like more than one million users. Hello, everyone. This is the Howie Xu, Bite into Future. I'm talking to people using AI coding agents. How important is Vibe coding to you? Sure. I think uh, in general with programming, the hard part has always been uh, the thinking, not the right. writing of code. And like, you know, figuring out what the problem is, figuring out the requirements, uh, breaking down the problem into subtasks. Um, the people that are really good at that are like, about to be 10 or 100x by vibe coding um, because the actual writing of the code, executing the task, doing the ticket uh, is largely automated for you now. I think it's great for yeah. getting started with an idea, building yep. something new, integrating into an existing multi-million line oh. code base. Yeah, it's, it's so not it's there for yet. prototyping. Yeah, it's for prototyping. Only prototyping. Not only for prototyping. Okay. Let's say only. Okay. That's I, what Jay I, can take I, over. I guess like for vibe coding, if we want to do, do it well, there are some prelim, uh, prerequisites. Uh, the first thing is you have to make sure your code base is set up correctly. What I mean by set up correctly is that you first you have to have enough test coverage to make and also make sure that you have test tools that the agent can leverage before they actually commit the code or actually submit a PR. They can test and validate everything is working properly before they hand it off back to human. Yeah, and in general, I think the bottleneck with vibe coding, coding agents is verification, like you're talking about. Right. If you have a robust system for verifying that your code works correctly, like unit tests, like uh, a, Q a QA team even, or like uh, if you're building a, a front end uh, visual feedback from a renderer, mm -hmm. um, if you have the verifier set up, then the agent can make changes to your code without breaking things. And that's that's the bottleneck. So option. in order for you to really use get most out of the vibe coding for serious programming, it cannot be just a you know a product person who's never been coding, right? Because you don't even know what it means by you know test automation right. and testing, yeah. right? It cannot be that. If you sort of never been doing any coding, just do vibe coding, then you get toys. Right? Just toys. However, yeah. if you are serious programmers, you may be able to get serious stuff out of vibe coding because you're able to do the testing. Yep, that's right. Yeah, Testing, and also I think extensive documentation in terms of what happening prior, before you start a vibe coding session is really important as well. So in, internally, personally, I know Devin, nothing to shit on Devin, but Devin's, all the, uh, the, the Devin agents is trash. But what they're really good is the new product they released called uh, uh, DeepWiki. Yep. So per, uh, internally for our company's Ripple, every single Ripple file has been indexed by DeepWiki. So basically, they will build a holistic a Wikipedia for each of our code base. Mm -hmm. And then we'll make sure that every single new hire that we hire will reach through a wiki, including the agents. So enough prior context and the, the right context, not like just fuzzy context, mm -hmm. is also really important. Wait a second, this deep wiki, you, you want humans to read it? Humans to make sure it's correct. Double check everything is correct. And then you feed to agent. Yes. Yeah. Context so, is still the bottleneck. Right? Context is still the bottleneck. The you know you you said earlier the testing is the bottleneck, but the context really is the efficacy bottleneck. Yeah, right? that's right. You know the testing is the overall end-to-end -end solutions bottleneck. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Last question. Uh, you and I were just talking about it, but we we didn't get to the bottom of it. You feel like right now you got a lot more productivity out of the AI agents, like way more than before. Can you describe, you know, what's going on now? Like, uh, yeah. I guess this is just like having a urge of constantly working on something um, without being strained, constrained by my hands. You know what I mean? So I can work on multiple things at the same time. And um the thing is that if i have an idea it's way easier and faster to scale it out with computers mm -hmm. now uh what i mean by that is that you can decompose it a a a really complex idea into smaller tasks 
And then for each task that could be handled by agents, and then for each agent, um, of course, for each agent, you 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 want them to have a really strong testing plan before they hand it off back to another agent. And and then in this way, um, I what I found out is that I can uh work on multiple things at the same time. And, and so, multiple things within that project within, within that project. within that sort of task even yes you just decompose that into so, multiple so, so basically skill. so basically i transform a linear work schedule into a multi-parallel yep. uh, parallel agents work schedule so i can compress the delivery time maybe from weeks to days so i can work so basically um i'm not like constrained by the linear timeline you know what i mean so a new skill set that new skill set is really about managing ai at this point i mean managing managing the product you're building the managing man, managing the prds that you're writing and um and uh, it's similar to managing interns right she treats every agent as small interns so basically before you have a pretty good engineer now you have yeah. 10 interns yes how do you get those 10 interns to do things faster better than what you primarily you know um you you were doing before you, with one person is that how you think about it I, I think I think if if you're an engineer who can really have a real thought of um, mind map in your brain and it can read that down into as a context that can fit into agents and then break it down, that's a really important thing. Break it into break it down into smaller tasks. Um so so that each task can be delegated by different agents and then they can work to th on things together. I think that's, that's the true power of skill. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I think uh, the programming skill like it's not important. It's not, does not, does not matter that much anymore. It's yeah. engineering management skill, like your ability to break down a task into those subtasks to like clearly specify requirements. You have to treat them like interns, like code monkey idiots in a way, you know, where yeah. everything has to be spelled out for them. Every instruction needs so, to be spelled out. So here, here's that's, another, that's yeah. a new skill. I think that in my another thesis is, is that like, uh, senior or senior architectures or senior software designers, I think they will be way more valuable in the future compared to junior devs, and because like how they're de how they're designing the whole whole system, right? How can you make sure the design itself has enough novelty? Because even though right now the AI is smart smart enough, but in terms of originating a groundbreaking work, still needs human, right? And then based on that novel idea we need that particular human or another engineer manager who can work with that designer or work with that like system architecture to bring it on to smart hub. so i get it so for senior guys you used to be able to get this throughput now because of ai you are going to break things down to certain level and then you know how to uh, assigned to the AI, you know how to test it, and then overall you you know do things in parallel. Mm -hmm. The way you do the way you do in parallel, it's a new skill set. That's number one, right? The number two is you get more productivity, and then number three, as you said, this is a uh, music um, to the ear of the senior guys. Mm -hmm. What about guys like uh, who has not been officially in the I, workspace? Well, what's their future? I I think the future is all about problem solving. Don't just constrain by what you're building or do just become constrained by the codes that you deliver. Just think about the problem, like, I, like, like what, what module is going to be introduced to solve this problem for each modules, how, how, if you're designing this, what kind of, what kind of technology you want to use? Right. And then I think there's honestly been a never, there's never been a better time for someone like right. you who's just entering the market right now. Um, if your goal is to, like follow the prescribed path of becoming a junior engineer. You take a ticket, convert it to code, and then you get good enough at that, and then move on to senior, where you are the guy giving out the tickets. That path isn't really going to work anymore. You have to skip the junior step and go straight to building something completely new, yeah. which is very easy and doable now. So what I heard is the good before. news and the bad news. Bad news is if you want the, you know, the path, you know, from the standard junior career to path. standard career yeah. path. It's either you're, gone or it's not. You're in unlocked, trouble right? if you're, you're trouble. starting at, at right. level one. However, 
as a junior guy, now you can aim high, right? Yeah. You have tools, you have AI, you know, working for you even before you graduate, right? Right, right. that's right. You can be a manager, you can be a director, you may be a VP of, you know, yeah, you, will, you, will learn, you will learn the skill set through managing agents that like takes five or 10 years for a regular engineer to learn when they, you know, climb the ladder and become a manager. Right. It's so Jay, just to, for me to make sure I understand it. So right, that's what you are doing and that's what your team members are doing today. I, that's what I'm trying to teach my team members to do in today, right? So, uh, how I, big is your team? Uh, right now is like no, no more than twenty people, but like we're getting to twenty people people now. Okay, so with them only versus with AI today, what do you see the productivity difference between the two scenarios? Um, Imagine you know five years ago with the same twenty people versus twenty people today with the AI agents, the coding agents. I think. I think if everyone can, everyone can master the 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 the, the vibe coding paradigm, uh, each of them will have like at least like three or five x boost. Yeah, well, I'm not I'm not talking about ten x. Ten x is too extreme. It's also based on the cognitive understanding in terms of how to use AI, right? and also the novelty of what you're the doing. novelty. Yes. Okay, let me yeah. challenge you a little bit. Um, as an engineer, I don't write code all day long. I talk to my colleague. I try yeah. to understand right. things. I go to meetings. Sometimes I waste my time. Whatever, right? Yes. I'm talking about that engineer overall um, throughput or the, the overall productivity. Yes. Uh, but just 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 to chime in back into the point a little bit. This is the one of the reason why I'm thinking probably in the future for building company, you you do not need to have a lot of people anymore because as you were saying, right. For any year, for or any people working in, in a normal company, there will be a lot of meetings, contact switch, communications, or whatever, right? But as a person can do multiple things and power by agents and do multiple things that really well, then there's no like contact switch, right? There's no like knowledge shifting from your brain to my brain, which is gonna take some time. Mm -hmm. And if and if and if these people are not aligned or say uh, they're not at the same cognitive level they are big, in big trouble trouble so because to align you and me we have we are humans we have emotions we have yes. everything yes but get the agent to align there's no emotion right yeah, yeah yeah you know just just because you know the person didn't get a 10 percent raise right. you know he's not going to quit and and tomorrow at a deeper level you don't need to give them the why of what you're doing you, you know. just tell them yeah. what they have to do also just to tie this back to your point about like new engineers entering the market um, I think it's actually easier for new people to learn vibe coding than existing seasoned engineers to learn vibe coding because to vibe code, you have to trust the AI and not understand your, your code base. Like it becomes a black box to you. Like all these code changes get made that you don't understand. You don't have visibility into that scares a seasoned engineer. That's like, oh my God, it's going to open up. That's you know, very true. Bugs. You know, when if I think you're new though, you don't have that, uh, you know, yeah, that fear that's very true, you know, because, you know, in my daily life, uh, you know, almost on the daily, if, you know, every weekly, if not daily basis, people come to me and I say, hey, should I still do, you know, my, my kids or should I still get into this tech field, right, you know, um, and uh, I didn't quite know what to say if you would have come to me like three years ago, four years ago, because, you know, I saw AI is coming, right, and I can do coding. But what does that mean to everyday programmers? Today, my answer is very much to yours, right? If, if you only contend with doing the traditional ways, mm -hmm. probably this is a bad timing for you. Yeah. But if you are willing to be say, hey, I'm the AI native kid or I'm yeah. AI native generation, I believe that generation is actually going to produce and then it's have mass, more opportunity. Yeah. Yes, it's exactly. Like the golden era for I, those I think people. it will be the golden era for builders but worst era for coders. Yeah, for, for professional software engineers who are just in the corporate world and that's their job, they're going to have to radically change the way they do things to survive what's coming. But for people that just want to build where it's a means to an end, programming is a means to an end. Yes. It's a golden era. Like you can build every one. Wow, there are two very interesting insights. Uh, we just uh, discovered in the last, uh, discussed in the last uh, three, four minutes. In order for us to convey to humans to do something, right? A lot of time it's not just uh, what and the how, but also why, because the motivation behind that would uh, um, have a big impact. 
But with AI agents, you don't have to do it.、Mm -hmm. That's a very interesting statement for you to make. It's a different kind of management style. It's a、now. very different. I wouldn't say it's easy or you know、uh, not easy. It's just different,、yeah. right? Because、mm -hmm. arguably it's quite difficult, right? Because it's at least for me, it's new skill set.、Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I love the last sentence you just said. You know, it's a it's a golden age for builders, not the coders.、Mm -hmm. With that, do you have a last、uh, word to share with our audience? We're、sign、hiring, up for final round AI. Yeah, no, we're, we're hiring final <laughs> final in years, and、uh, if you're interested, hit up, hit us up. And then, if you want to learn more about magics, just also hit me up as well. And if you want to learn more about developer tools, AI powered ones, that's what I spend all day building. So hit me up too. And last but not least, if you want the AI native browser, that's safe. That's Neo, N E O, Neo Today AI. <laughs>